Laos doesn't get a lot of attention. It's been popular with travelers, uh, backpackers on the so-called banana pancake trail been stopping there for years. But what about as a place to do business from? In this video, we're going to take a closer look at the Lao tax system and explore whether there are any opportunities for offshore tax planning. Aaron here from Offshore in Asia. So if you're interested in moving your life, your money, your business, your investments out to Asia, we can help you to make that happen. So first, straight off the bat here, this isn't tax advice. All we're doing here is having a look at the tax system in Laos and exploring uh, whether there are some opportunities for tax minimization as part of an offshore structure. But if you are looking to move out here and set up business and looking to do some tax planning, uh, you have to speak to a tax professional first. So go speak to someone before you make any big moves. We can help you with that if you like. Now, onto the video. Laos doesn't have a definition for personal tax residency. And the reason for that is that income derived by foreigners in Laos is generally taxable. So if you're a sole trader or an independent contractor who's living and working in Laos, you're gonna be subject to income tax on business income that is derived in the country. Although income from a foreign employer, such as salary and wages, generally isn't taxable, unless you are in the country for at least 183 days in a tax year. And a tax year runs from January through to December. Now, if you are liable for personal tax in Laos, which is your personal income tax, the marginal rates start at 0% for the first 15.6 million KIP, which is about 900 US dollars. And that ranges up to 25% on income over 780 million KIP, which is about 45,000 US dollars. So here we're talking about regular income, but there are different rates for different types of income, such as dividends, uh, interest, capital gains, and so forth. And we're gonna get into them in a second. Now, one thing you have to be a little bit careful of in Laos is that they don't offer, uh, they don't have legislated foreign tax credits in their Income Tax Act there. There are tax treaties available with some countries to help you avoid double taxation. So you're gonna to have to be a little bit careful there. Have a good look at the treaties, get a solid understanding of how the tax in your source country for where your income is sourced, if it's offshore in a country outside of Laos, how that's gonna interact with your income tax liability in Laos. Okay, first up, let's have a look at dividends. Now, dividends are taxed at 10%, which is quite a low rate compared to a lot of other countries in the world. So there is an opportunity here to minimize your tax if you weren't paying a lot of tax in the source country, then you can bring it into Laos and have the 10% tax there. There's no foreign tax credit here unless you have some relief with a double taxation agreement. Interest can present another opportunity because it is generally tax-free if it is locally sourced. Forced. Foreign interest, on the other hand, has a withholding rate of 10%. So here you need to look at, um, you gotta look at the interest rate in Laos, of course, and the inflation rate in Laos, and then you gotta compare that to uh, what you would be getting and the inflation rate in another country. Do the sum, see how it stacks up. But on a like-for-like -like basis, there could be some opportunity there to pay the low 10% on foreign interest or tax-free for locally sourced interest. Now, Lao does not have a capital gains tax as such, but they do tax the selling price of a capital asset like shares at the rate of 2%. So that can offer a very good opportunity as well. And I'm gonna show you some sums here of how this could compare against a place like Australia that has a capital gains tax. Okay, so let's say you're in Australia, you bought a parcel of shares for $50,000, that's your cost base, and 12 months later, or just over 12 months later, you sold those shares for $100,000. So you've got a $50,000 capital gain. Now in Australia, if you've held your shares for at least 12 months, you get a 50% discount on the gain and you only pay tax on that leftover 50%. So applying that discount in Australia on that 50,000 capital gain, you're gonna pay about $11,750 in tax. Now if you held those shares for less than 12 months and you didn't get the CGT discount, you're gonna pay around $23,500 in tax. And these figures are based on if you're in the top tax bracket paying 47% and that includes the Medicare levy. We've ignored the Medicare surcharge for these calculations. Now comparing that to Lao, they don't have the capital gains tax, but they do tax 2% of the selling price. So 2% of the selling price, 100 grand, 
that's $2,000, which is a lot less than you'll be paying in a place like Australia. Rental income is taxed at just 10%. That presents another opportunity. Again, in a place like Australia, if you're in the top tax bracket, you're gonna be paying that 47% again. So that's a big difference there. And if you hold intellectual property and you earn royalties on that IP, you're only gonna pay 5% on that in Laos. And the last point I'll mention here for personal tax is that Lao does not have an inheritance tax. So if you're living in a country that taxes inheritance, you could lose a lot of that to the tax office. Whereas if you were in Laos and you received that inheritance, they're not going to tax it if you're a resident there. Okay, so that's the rundown on personal tax rates, but of course that's only half the story. We have to look at corporate tax rates now. So just like personal tax residency, Laos does not define corporate residency or permanent establishment under Lao tax law. But according to Lao double taxation treaties, permanent establishment is defined as a fixed place of business through which the business of an enterprise is wholly or partly carried on. So expanding on a couple of those points, if you have a Lao resident company, a registered company in Lao, you will pay tax, corporate tax on worldwide income. But for foreign resident companies, you will only pay tax on income that is derived in Lao. So there could be some opportunities there to pursue if you had a foreign registered company, a foreign resident company, uh, that was in a low tax jurisdiction, so it's not paying a lot of tax where it's set up. And if this business was not regarded to be deriving its income from Lao, there could be some tax opportunities there. Lao does not have any CFC rules. So CFC rules relate to controlled foreign corporations. And this comes about when, uh, say you have a company in Lao and you have a, a foreign company set up in another country, and then you divert profits uh, from your Lao company to the other company set up in a different country in a low tax jurisdiction. So Lao does not uh, have any CSC rules stopping you from doing that. So the question there is, will that foreign company be regarded as deriving its income from Lao like a, a corporate resident? And then you might be taxable that way. But that still is pretty interesting all the same. It also doesn't have any transfer pricing regulations. And the transfer pricing regulations would stop you from uh, billing out a large amount of work to a related company at inflated prices. So you would have to bill out the work at a price that would be reasonable to charge to a non-related third party. And because Lao does not have any transfer pricing regulations, that's one less thing that can get in the way of your international tax planning. The standard corporate tax rate in Lao is 20%, but there are different rates for different industries. So I'll mention a couple of them here that are quite interesting. So if you're operating a training and research center, you only have to pay 5% corporate tax. And if you're involved in green tech, you only pay 7% tax. So that can offer a lot of opportunity in itself if you're willing to work inside these industries. So wrapping it up here, guys, Lao is not a typical offshore tax hub, but if you were living there, perhaps you married a Lao national, there are opportunities to structure things in a tax favorable way. So you're already living there, you might have a business there, you might have investments in other countries. If you structure things in a certain way, it can be quite favorable to you. And of course, guys, before we finish up, I'll just mention again, this is not tax advice. You need to go out and speak to a tax lawyer in your home country, uh, probably in the country where you have your offshore assets and definitely uh, to a tax lawyer in Lao. If you want, we can help you with that. Other than that, I hope you found this interesting. It is a kind of interesting place. There are a few little quirks here that uh, you could explore for sure. But if you are thinking of moving out to Lao or you're already there and you have some investments in the country and some investments out of the country, we can help you structure things in a way that will help you to minimize your overall tax.